Hello again, I'm Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'm looking at the iconic Vulcan MT 1200 watt power supply. What's included is the user's manual, a pouch for the modular leads, four thumb screws for mounting the power supply in the case, the power cord, and the power supply. The Vulcan MT line of power supplies are currently available in four wattages, 650, 850, 1000, and 1200. I will be reviewing the 1200 watt model, which is more than enough power even for hardcore computer systems. Now how is this wattage determined? Well to understand that, you need to know what rails are. Rails are basically well regulated transformers which convert domestic current into the voltages that your computer system can use. And there are essentially two different rails, the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail and the 12 volt rail. In this particular case, the approximate maximum peak output of the 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is 180 watts and the 12 volt rail is 1188 watts, which is essentially how the wattage of this power supply is determined. The 3.3 slash 5 volt rail is responsible for the motherboard, memory, PCI cards and so on, while the 12 volt rail is responsible for the hard drives, optical drives, fans, CPU, video cards, etc. Also, some might be interested to know the peak amps on each rail. Well, the plus 3.3 volt rail is 30 amps and the plus 5 volt rail is 28 amps. There are four plus 12 volt rails. The first two are 22 amps each and the remaining are 38 amps each. And all four have a combined power of 99 amps. There are a couple of important things to remember when selecting a power supply. The first is wattage. Determine how much wattage you are going to require by the amount of hardware you will be installing. Generally speaking, a medium to high-end gaming rig would require a 500 to 700 watt power supply. For a hardcore system, select a power supply that's around 800 watts. If, however, you are building an extreme gaming rig with a top of the line multiple video card setup with lots of other hardware, select a power supply that's 1000 watts or greater. Second, it should be at or above 80% efficient at typical load. The efficiency of this power supply is rated above 80% at maximum load. Third, it should meet the latest ATX and other current standards, environmental directives, over voltage, under voltage, and other protections. This power supply meets all current standards. Fourth, I'd recommend choosing a power supply that has APFC. APFC, or Active Power Factor Correction, is something that also assists the power supply in being more efficient and therefore stable under load. APFC basically reduces total harmonics, corrects input voltage, and it allows for full input voltage range. Thankfully, this power supply has APFC. Fifth, there are three main certifications, AD Plus, NVIDIA SLI, and ATI Crossfire. Many of today's high-end power supplies meet one or more of these certifications. At present, this power supply doesn't meet any certifications. Although certifications can take a while, and this doesn't mean it won't be certified, it just means that at the time of this review, it is not certified. Sixth, look for a power supply that uses Japanese capacitors. This ensures a much more reliable power supply than a power supply with low-grade capacitors. This power supply uses Japanese capacitors. Finally, get a power supply that has enough leads for your setup. Also consider a power supply that has a modular design because it reduces the cable mess inside the case. This power supply is long, so it might not fit in some mid-tower cases and will not fit in most home theater PC and small form factor cases. It has a rough paint finish and a steel housing. They include a thermal controlled quiet blue LED 140 millimeter fan so the hotter the inside of the power supply gets the faster the fan spins. The 140 millimeter fan and the honeycomb ventilation ensures maximum cooling so the power supply should remain cool in almost any environment. Also note that the fan's LEDs can be turned on or off via an LED switch at the back. I think a better location for this switch would have been near the main power switch, but I still commend them for including it. I wish more power supplies that have an LED fan would include it, because it's nice to have an option to be able to turn the fan's LEDs on or off when you want. Here's the power cable connection and the power switch. This power supply has lots of leads. 
but the 24 pin and two 8 pin motherboard leads as well as two PCI Express video card leads are hardwired into the power supply and can't be removed. The remaining though are sleeved modular leads and all these modular leads get connected at the back. While all the leads on this power supply aren't modular, most of the required ones are already attached. Modular leads are fantastic because you only need to use the ones required for your particular setup, which reduces the cable mess inside the case. This not only looks great, but it increases airflow inside the case as well. In future versions of this power supply, they hope to include MAD Tweaker software. It's the world's first power supply with embedded wireless MAD Tweaker technology, which avoids EMC through transmission. Control, monitor, and alarm warnings are by two-way transmission of wattage, voltage, current, fan speed, and thermal functions. Also, it has a universal user interface compatible with all motherboards and systems. Finally, have a listen to the 140mm fan. This is the type of high wattage power supply you need if you have a hardcore gaming computer system with a top of the line multiple video card setup. This power supply performs exceptionally well, has a very quiet 140 millimeter fan and also you can turn the fans blue LEDs on or off and as well it's modular. Overall this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care.